So, with the rhododendron care, um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is culture. And where do you typically find rhododendrons in the wild? Like, in what kind of a condition? In the woods, yeah. Typically. Are, is everybody here growing their rhododendrons in the shade, in the woods? Yeah? No? <laughs> okay. They're not typically found on sunny front lawns, okay, in nature. That's, that's a kind of a condition that they don't enjoy a whole lot. Um, and if you'll notice, most of our rhododendrons, with a few exceptions, are in areas that are shaded in the summertime. Um, we're not quite there yet because the oaks on Cape Cod don't typically come out until the first week in June. But uh, eventually this will be shady and that's what they really prefer. Um, so shade is the first thing to think about with culture. Um, how about watering? Anybody, does everybody water your rhododendrons in the summer? No? Okay. Um, okay, well that's good. Um, ideally, if we aren't getting rain every week, then you probably need to be watering your plants. Um, is everybody here from the Cape? Anybody here? Maryland. Maryland. Maine. Maine? Okay. I'm sorry? Oldie. We're from Central Mass. Central Mass, okay. And my, my uh, rhododendron is completely in the sun. Okay. But it's doing pretty good. Is it? Need and the flowers? Are the flowers okay? It hasn't flowered yet, but it has a lot of buds that are ready to flower. Yep. Okay. Well, we haven't well. really had any spring. Really? <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so water. Water is really important. Um, they like about the equivalent of an inch of rain a week, especially if you're on the Cape and you have our soils, which are really sandy down here. Um, if you're in an area that has heavier soils, more clay, then you probably don't need an inch. Of rain a week but you do need consistent water um, and I'll talk a lot more about what kinds of things happen if you don't have consistent water um, so shade water um, any other things cultural acidic soil. acid fertilizer right acidic soil they like pH that's low our pH here on the Cape and at least on at heritage it's around 4.5 to 5, so it's pretty acidic. Um, a typical lawn, if you're trying to grow a lawn and you put lime down uh, on your lawn, then you're keeping your pH probably around 6.5, so maybe even 7. And that's what turf grass likes, but rhododendrons don't. So keep that in mind if you're growing your rhododendrons close to a lawn. Um, if you're not liming your lawn, it probably won't do as well. And it'll probably look like it's not doing well, but your um, rhododendrons will probably be happier if you don't line your lawn. Um, so grow them in an area that uh, where you're not going to be close to turf grass. Uh, so uh, anything else cultural like that you can think of? Okay. Um, my guess is everybody wants to know about pruning. Okay. Um, why do you prune rhododendrons? That's probably number one. Anything else? Stimulate fuller growth. Fuller growth. Fuller growth. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So shape and compactness. Um, anything else? Dead branches. Dead branches, yep. Okay. So those are the kind of the main reasons why you want to prune. Um, does everybody know how to prune? No. Okay. Okay. That's why you're here. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the first rule to remember is this. I bought this at CVS last night. It is alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And whenever you're pruning your plant, you should spray your pruners with alcohol before you go between plants, from one plant to the next. And that's in case you have any disease problems you don't transfer those problems to the next plant because rhododendrons have a lot of disease issues, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, so alcohol is your friend. You need to have it handy. Um, and I need my props. <laughs> Sorry, I should have brought these over with me. 
Okay, so I brought some fries. Um, and this is probably the easiest thing to remember about pruning is dead wood. Okay, so whenever you see dead, just obviously go in, cut it back as close as you can to the original stem, and that's it. Um, if you want to control size, then that's obviously started growing, whereas this one is a little bit later and hasn't started to, to bud out yet. Um, you can do that in multiple ways. If you want to just control size, then you can do pinch pruning. So you can go in and pinch out these new growth buds and just kind of snap them out. Um, it's really easy this time of year, although it can be a little messy because they're, they tend to be a little sticky. Um, you can also go in and cut them out. Um, but that will then cause the plant hormonally to realize that that growth bud's no longer there and it will start to sprout buds lower down on the stem. <laughs> um, you can also go in and cut the stem back and you will see buds on the stem and if you cut it back then those buds will start to grow. Um, and again it's just hormones the plant realizes it doesn't have growth tips and it decides to grow. So how much you can do that um, really depends on the cultivar and on your plant. Some plants respond really well to hard pruning. Um, if I could pass this around, but if you notice there's, there are buds on the stem back two or three years back on growth. And if you cut these, cut this plant back to just above buds, then those buds will start growing. Um, you know, you're, and of course, the more you cut it back, the more incentive it has to grow. Um, but also keep in mind, if you do that to your entire plant, it also has no way to produce energy to grow with. So we recommend going in and cutting out a quarter to a third of the plant at a time if you're going to do major pruning. Um, and in a plant like one of these here, I would just go in and take out the taller areas all over the plant just selectively cut about a third of the plant back and you can cut them back in many cases we take off three or four feet of growth down into the plant and that encourages new growth down inside and it does that because as i said hormonally it realizes it doesn't have anything to grow with um, and it will start to grow new shoots but also when you do that, you open up the plant, you get more light down inside, more light encourages these buds to grow, and then the plant will start to grow um, at, a, at a point down here instead of up here. So that's one way to, to shorten it um, or to make it more compact. Um, you know, it's really simple just to go around and, and cut a lot of these back. You can, you can do that in multiple ways, as I said, you can do it leaving a couple of leaves if you want. Um, again, that will encourage it to grow down farther and uh, you'll have a hopefully more compact plant by doing that. Um, any questions about what I've been doing? The greenish color on the leaves, is that fungus when you see that kind of color? Uh, yeah. it pro yes, in this case actually that green on the stem, if anybody, everybody can see that, is a lichen. Um, and it's lichens are, I can find them all over the cape on trees, on shrubs. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they don't, they're not parasitic. Mm -hmm. They don't hurt anything. Uh, sometimes they're uh, an indicator of a problem, especially if you see them growing up in the tops of trees really heavily um, because they like sun. And if the tree isn't full, it doesn't have a full shaded canopy, then light gets in and then the lichens grow. Um, the lichens attach themselves and they actually exist on the moisture in the air. So um, they're more epiphytic than they are parasitic. But have they don't a, have um, a yellow leaf on there. Would you be trimming that off as well? You know, I would. Um, and that, um, 
I thought I'd, I'll talk about the diseases. Anybody have any questions about pruning? What time of year is best? Okay, why don't you finish that okay, first? I was told a long time ago. Go. You see this there's one here? Yeah. If I snip that off, I'll get more blossoms. Probably. It takes, if you snip it off the year prior, That's when these flowers are spent. What that is is this. It's last year's oh, flower. Yeah. Okay. And you snap that out, and you can just go around and snap all the as soon as they're done flowering. Uh, and they, they spend a lot of energy producing seeds. So by doing that, you're going to encourage get the plant more energy, encourage it to grow. Um, timing for pruning. As soon as they're done flowering, it's the best. Uh, and you can prune them up through mid-July or so, um, depending on the species and depending on where you are in latitude. You know, in Maryland, you can probably go to August. The farther north you get, the farther towards spring you get. Um, because you need to, whenever you prune, you're probably encouraging new growth. And that new growth has to grow out and have time to harden off prior to being hit by cold in the fall. And if you prune too late and it starts to grow too late, then it's, the cold comes and that growth isn't hardy and it will die. So you can encourage dieback in your plant if you prune too late in the season. Um, and the pinch pruning, again, you know that you can do any time. You can prune now if you want. Um, and corrective pruning, that's great. Just keep in mind that you're probably going to cut off flowers. So that's why, that's the only reason why I say when they're done flowering. You can do it anytime up through July, uh, mid-July. But um, ideally you'd want to enjoy your flowers. <laughs> you can. I mean, that's why you grow them. So. If the flowers start getting sad, mm -hmm. can you go ahead and pinch them off then? You can. Yeah, uh, I've always waited until they were totally dead for some reason. But, but yeah, uh, if, if you have the time and your plants aren't crazy huge, <laughs> then yes, as soon as they start looking sad, just snap out those okay. or prune them out. You can do it either way. Um, each one of these flowers will produce hundreds. I mean, like each flower, individual flower, will produce hundreds of seeds and they're about the size of pepper um, and it takes a lot of energy for the plant to produce hundreds times five times hundred um, of seeds so by cutting them out then you're obviously going to give the plant incentive and more energy to spend on growing and being healthy. So. Wes, related question to the pruning. We have some uh, gigan gigundus <laughs> uh, ones that were put in as foundation plants, and they don't belong there. Mm -hmm. There's not enough space, they're woody now, we have to cut them down every year or two. Right. Uh, so we're going to relocate them. So relative to pruning, mm -hmm. do we prune them before we move them, which of course would be easier. Yes. It's going to be done mechanically because they're, they're big anyway, yeah. and big root systems. So what would you recommend? I would prune them before you move them. Okay. Um, or immediately as, after you move them, as soon as you can during that process. Because obviously as soon as you move them, they're going to have a lot fewer roots than they did prior to being moved. And uh, in order to keep the plant healthy and alive, then you, it needs to have less area to transpire moisture. Um, the other thing to do with rhododendrons, and we move large rhododendrons here occasionally, um, and that is to keep them very well watered. We put soaker hoses on them and we run them every night for an hour after they've been moved every single day for the first year. Um, and that's really important if you're going to move your plants, okay. um, the pruning, especially if they're large. Pruning side of that, stick with the one quarter to one third, no more than that. Yeah, you can prune more than that if they're being moved. Okay. If they're being moved, you can prune them pretty hard. Okay. And I would probably recommend that. Yeah. Good. And you can prune, I mean, if your plants are like this and they're in front of your house and you really need to prune them. And they're not that big. Yeah, probably about I mean, that. We, we have pruned with a chainsaw. Mm. You know, and <laughs> depending on how you do it and what species and what cultivar, they usually respond pretty well. Okay. Thank you. You can. 
Yeah, uh, and obviously we don't have the, the labor to be able to do that, to take them off. So at Heritage, we don't remove the flowers. But I have worked at gardens longer where they did do that, but they had the resources. Okay. Um, Diseases? We talk about diseases. Um, the best way to control disease issues is keep the plant happy and healthy. So keep it well watered, um, fertilize it probably once a year, keep the pH where it needs to be, keep it in the shade if you can or somewhat shaded, and you'll have a lot fewer problems. I'm sorry? Fertilizer. Uh, we use Osmocote because it's controlled release. Um, you know, we don't have to worry about pH, but if your pH is a little high, then you can use something like Hollytone, because Hollytone obviously is acidic and will lower the pH of the soil. Um, but otherwise, I would use Osmocote. Osmocote's good. Does everybody know what Osmocote is? Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's slow release. It, uh, Osmocote is a, a granular that releases, it's slow release, and you can get it in three months, six months, or nine month formulations, and it lasts as long as whatever that formulation is. Um, but it releases based on moisture in the soil and temperature. So the warmer it is and the more moist it is, the more rapidly it releases because you would assume the plants need the, moist, the fertilizer at that point when it's cold and dry doesn't release at all. So that's the, the beauty of Osmocote. Which Osmocote's best for roadies? Um, Three months or the six month or? You know, I would probably do six months. And I would do it now because they like fertilizer now. They also like fertilizer in the fall um, because it helps to build strength going into the cold winter. Um, and by applying it now, what the amount that's released in the fall is not a lot. It's just a little bit. Um, so, you know, you're not encouraging a lot of growth in the fall, and you don't want to encourage growth in the fall. So. Thank you. Uh, disease issues. Yeah. Can we just kind of go on up to the uh, here? Oh, we have plenty of them. <laughs> 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 I'm guessing everybody's seen it. Is that winter kill? Uh, it's possibly winter kill. It is most likely a fungal disease, but it could certainly be winter kill or winter damage. Um, the first thing I'd say is to get rid of it. Uh, you know, leaving it on the plant. If it is a fungal problem, it will eventually kill the plant. So. Um, as I said, keep the plant happy and healthy and well watered. That will discourage these things. The plant can usually outgrow it. Uh, secondly, keep it removed. So go in and cut this out. Um, I tell people to cut back the stem, and if the stem has brown inside, then the fungus is there. That's an indicator of fungus. Um, so keep cutting down the stem until you don't see brown anymore because the interior, the wood of rhododendrons should be greenish white and not brown. Brown is not a good thing. So you keep cutting down the stem until you get the clean wood, clean white wood. By now, cutting it, do you introduce fungus in there? The last cut needs to be treated, the pruners need to be treated with alcohol before you make the very last cut. Uh, that way you haven't or won't transmit the disease into the rest of the plant. Um, and that's another reason for keeping this handy. Always make sure you treat between plants too. Um, so that's probably, um, that could be one of a couple things. Phytophthora, Fusarium, I mean, they're all, one of those is rude. Well, anyway, uh, if, if it's a branch, go in and prune the branch out. Um, if, and prune out any branches. If it is, however, the entire plant, then you need to dig up the plant and get rid of it. And if the entire plant died and you dig it up and get rid of it, then plant a hydrangea or plant something other than a rhododendron. 
because you probably have the fungal disease in the soil and it will attack the roots of the new plant that you plant. And any plant within the genus Rhododendron will most likely contract the disease from the soil and you're just going to keep having the same problem. How big um, a space is that though? Sorry, um, because it, you know, if you've got plants close together like this, how big an area around that? Yeah, um, it really, you know, usually it happens pretty soon after planting or within a year or two. Um, usually once a plant's established and, and happy and growing, you don't see that very often. Um, you know, we see one or two plants a year that do that here, um, it, of mature plants. Um, but I would dig out a, a couple of feet, you know, depending on how big the plant was, um, and get rid of the soil, try to take it off your property. Can you plant mountain laurel or will that, is that susceptible to the same? Same. Mountain laurel and rhododendron are in the same family. They're both irritatious. And, yeah. Okay. Um, other disease issues. Does anybody have black spots? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is probably a bacterial disease. Uh, especially this. This one probably so. Um, and this one I can see it has brown and then it has a little ring around the brown on it. It's almost like a bullseye. Um, so that's probably bacteria. There's probably not much you can do other than keep the plant happy and healthy. If you do, it will grow out of it. Um, there are very, very few times when this will actually kill the plant. It makes them unsightly. So that's why I say keep them watered, keep them happy, keep them in the shade, and you'll have a lot less of them. Should you um, cut those leaves out or pluck you can, them? You can cut them out or snap, just snap them off. But you should? You know, um, the best thing to do is, if you can, if your plant's not overly large and you can do that, yes, remove the leaves and get them off the property. Uh, bag them and get rid of them. And that brings up the point of hygiene and keeping the plants uh, clean. Whenever they drop their leaves, you should pick up the leaves and not put them in the compost pile, but instead put them in the bag and put them in the garbage because those leaves could reinfect the plant next year. So if you get the leaves out, get them off the property, you have fewer problems with diseases like this. Again, they don't usually kill the plant. They usually just make them look not great. Um, anybody have plants that have been eaten? Um, and I don't think I brought any others that have any now. Um, if you look around our plants, especially the leaves closer to the ground, you'll see what look like little shot holes, like somebody shot it with a shotgun, and there'll be a bunch of holes. It's usually a couple of holes per leaf. Um, it's probably weevils. They're an insect. They live in the soil. You never ever see them. Like you'll notice, you'll see the holes, but you never see what's making the holes. And it's probably weevils. They live in the soil. They come up at night. They have dinner, and they go back in the ground in the morning. Um, so you'll never find them. So you know, usually they're not really that big of a deal. Um, they eat a little bit here and there, and they don't. Eat um, but if you want to get rid of them, you can apply a, a soil um, pesticide, and that will kill them in the soil. Um, but I'd recommend going online and looking at you know, finding what treatments are recommended for them, uh, if if they're real. Um, uh, any other questions about, you know, there really aren't many other insects that attack these things. Lacewing will attack them, mostly uh, if they're stressed or in full sun, if they're in shade and they're happy, then lacewing and other insects like that usually don't cause much of a problem. Are cherry laurels in the same family? I believe are, I think they're rose family. Uh, yeah. Cherry laurel in the same family. Uh, Calmia is 
mountain laurel, and those are in the same family. Hello? Yeah. Oh. I think, uh, no, I... Cherry laurel is Primus laurel seraphia, so it would be in the um, rose family. Rose. This lady over here oh, has a question. Fine. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, because I have some rhodes that have to be moved to. Is there a is there a preferred time of year to, to actually try to to move them right now? Now, oh, perfect. Okay. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just moved. Um, okay, good. In our new garden area that we're building, we Great. just moved five that were about the size of the ones. Wonderful. Um, and they're even all, if it's in flower, to move it. I'm sorry? Even if it's in flower? Yeah, uh, in our case, we had to do it. Um, you know, ideally, probably a little bit before. And if you can, go through and cut out the flowers. Yeah. We pruned them back. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, anybody want to know about propagation? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you have plants um, that have low branches, probably the easiest thing is to scar the branches that are close to the ground, put a little rooting hormone on them, and pin them to the ground and cover them with mulch. Uh, they will air layer themselves into the soil, and a year or so from now, you can just cut the stem off and dig it up, and you'll have a rooted plant. That's the easiest for the average homeowner because the, the plant is supplying everything that cutting, so to speak, needs to grow until it grows roots and then you can cut it off and you have new plants. That's the easiest thing. If you want to try growing them by cuttings, then there are two times of the year for rhododendrons you can do that. Um, and now is not one of them. <laughs> um, but I'll use this as an example. You can do it in mid-June through mid-July on new growth that has, I had some new growth here, somewhere, oh well. Um, yeah, no. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so that's new growth. Uh, that growth will elongate and will harden off. Mm -hmm. So it will still be green. Um, it will be, by mid-July, it'll be where it should be. Um, maybe even a little bit earlier, but, uh, but right now is not the time. So pretend that this is that, that from <laughs> mid-July. Uh, you want to cut it off at about a 45 degree angle, four to six inches in length. Take the leaves and do this and cut them so you have that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to make sure you keep track of what cultivar it is, you can actually use a Sharpie and write the name on the leaf. Um, scar the leaf carefully. The stem you need to or, Excuse me, the stem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we knew what you meant. Yeah. 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 Um, so scar the stem lightly, okay. like that, on two sides. Dip it in, dip it in rooting hormone. Um, this time of the year in July, I would use probably a number two or three rooting hormone. Um, and then put it in a rooting medium. Um, and honestly, I found the best thing is what's called rock wool. You can buy little cubes on Amazon or eBay or anywhere, garden centers. Um, they're kind of a new thing, but they're, um, they're almost like spun fiberglass that's molded, but they're not glass. They're uh, a mineral product. Um, but you root it, uh, excuse me, put the hormone on it, stick them in the rock wool, keep the rock wool evenly moist, put the, a cover on them and put them in a shady spot. And they should root in about three months if you do that in the summertime. You can also do that with the same year's growth in the period from September through early December in this at this latitude that's the best time um, those are a little bit more difficult to get to root but it's the same process same rooting medium cover them but they will not root until the following spring uh, they need to be all right 
Um, they need to be uh, kept cool over the winter, but not outside. They need to be, you know, like a, a cool room. Oh, if you have a cool sunny window. Yeah. Uh, and again, <laughs> kept <laughs> covered so that the um, moisture doesn't transpire from the leaves. How about a basement? Basement? Yeah, you know, if you did that, if it's a basement window, they need light. So they would have to have light. Or you could do it under lights in the basement. Um, so those are the kind of the main ways to propagate them. If you want to hybridize, you can collect seed and sow the seed. Uh, and they will, in about six months, germinate. And in about five years, they'll flower. <laughs> and you could end up with who knows what. <laughs> uh, they won't come true to the parent. They'll come true to whichever parents were crossed to get that. Uh, so, and unless you're out here watching your bees, you don't know which plants are which. So, uh, so uh, any questions? Yes. When you prune, do you want the bottom of the rhododendron cleared out so that you can clean out and 